Hey family and friends, this is Pastor Marvin Gilliam Jr. of the Mount Carmel Baptist Church in the Church Hill area of Richmond, Virginia. Listen, it is our homecoming weekend. This is such an exciting weekend in the life of our church. And of course, you know, coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, has stopped the world and changed the way that we have been able to do things. Um, and so one of the great things about homecoming weekend that we celebrate every year uh, is our homecoming festival block party, where we bring out vendors and we uh, bring uh, entertainment to come together uh, and to uh, share right on the block, right outside of our church, right on the street. It's like a great party. The community comes out uh, and it's a great time. And unfortunately, you know, we're not able to do it in that way this year. However, we thought it would be cool to highlight some black owned businesses as well as some entertainment from our local area um, and give them opportunity virtually to share with you today. So I'm hopeful today that you will take the time to watch, um, to hear what our vendors have to share about their various products and resources that they offer, that you will sit back and enjoy the great um, entertainment that we have that's a part of our virtual homecoming festival. Listen, I am so excited about this event. I'm excited that we get this new opportunity to try something new uh, and to do it in this way. So look, kick back, relax, make sure um, that you that you got this tuned in on, your, uh, on the biggest screen in your house so that you can participate and share in our virtual homecoming festival. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, and we hope that you enjoy. Listen, our first uh, entertainment group today uh, is gonna be a phenomenal praise team. We want to welcome uh, a new level of worship uh, praise team from the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Chester, Virginia, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. Marcus N. Leggett. Listen, we hope you enjoy and check out the interviews that are to follow uh, that piece. And I'll be back in a few uh, just to share and give you some updates on things that are happening at TMCBC. this old school jam that we do and the song go like this hallelujah salvation and glory honor and power unto the lord our god yeah. for the lord our god is mighty and the lord our god is omnipotent the lord A new level, help me sing this old jam. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Whoa! Salvation and glory, honor and power, honor and power unto the Lord. Y'all sound real good. For the Lord our God is mighty. For the Lord our God is mighty. Lord our God is
sopranos, come on. Jennifer Gilliam, and I have Mr. Will Giles of Giles Wealth Management here with me today. Mr. Giles, tell us and our viewers a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Well, thank you, Jennifer. And hello to everyone out there in the Mount Carmel audience. Uh, well, basically, my business is a full-service brokerage firm. Uh, I also provide advisory services to folks. And I specialize in evaluating client goals financially and providing uh, recommendations on how to achieve them. I am fully licensed and able to provide whatever products and services my clients may need. Uh, I can do anything from bank CDs to life insurance to setting up IRAs and even estate planning. And my philosophy is sort of built on a financial pyramid. So if you're in the audience and you'll have to go with me here, you know, you grab a piece of paper and draw yourself a triangle. And then I want you to cut that triangle into four you know, little segments, make three lines in the middle. So that first base level is going to be what I call the planning section. We're planning for retirement. The second would be what I call the preparing segment, which is you're preparing for, well, the unforeseen. That's where you put your life insurance. Then the third segment is going to be your fund segment. So it's like once we've planned and prepared, now say so, hey, we got a little extra money, let's, let's have some fun. You know, I want to take a trip every year. And then that final top of the pyramid is where we're going to put our giving or philanthropy and legacy section. So this is now where we start talking about how we transition your assets to the next generation or to your church or what have you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and I heard you mention something about preparing in that pyramid. So as you know, we're dealing right now with a global pandemic um, and everybody has been impacted in some form. Can you provide us a little bit of financial advice to kind of keep us on track during this particular season? Oh, absolutely. So most folks out there probably have a car. And if not, you've seen one on TV. <laughs> well, a car is basically a vehicle to get you from point A to point B. And your money's really no different. It's a vehicle to get you from where you are today to where your financial goals are tomorrow. And much like your car, I expect that you should take it in for a checkup or an oil change or some form of servicing. And your money should do the same. About once a year, you should be meeting with a professional if you're so inclined to do so, and just go over everything. How well uh, diversified are you? 
Um, look at how your assets have moved from where they were before to where they are today. And are they on track to get there tomorrow? Uh, do you have too much stock exposure? Do you not have enough? And so these are the types of things that we help clients in assessing in their, in their uh, portfolio just to make sure everything's on track. Okay. Okay. So I know a lot of people, when they think financial advisor, a lot of people are kind of scared to get into that avenue. So are there, is there something that you would, you might be able to offer our audience, any special offers um, to our virtual homecoming festival viewers maybe? Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the things that's near and dear to my heart is making sure uh, people that quite frankly look like me get a fair shake in this industry. I think for too long we've been underserved and there's been too much misinformation out there about what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. So for your audience and uh, the folks all at Mount Carmel basically, um, between now and the end of the year, I'll meet with anyone and I'll provide my services on a consultation uh, for free. Uh, we'll sit and we'll talk and go over where we are and you can decide what you wanna do from there. And for those that decide to hire me to uh, manage money for them with their account, uh, say $50,000 or more, then um, that's a rollover of an old 401k or you've got a savings account that's just sitting there earning next to nothing. I will cut my fee in half, which is normally about one and a half percent on an annual basis, but I'll cut my fee in half through the end of the year. So after December of 2020, if you decide you don't like me or whatever, then hey, everyone's free to go. But if you do want to keep me and then take me on, then I hopefully will be able to earn your business going forward at the normal rate. Okay, that is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm pretty sure that those who are in need of a financial advisor, an expert, someone to give sound advice will definitely be reaching out to you. Um, how can people connect with you then? Glad you asked. So probably the easiest way to go to my website, uh, which is www.gileswm.com. And that's J-I-L-E-S W-M, not a G, uh, gileswm.com. And on that website, you'll find more information about my philosophy and how I manage money. There'll also be a link uh, to, how, to FINRA, which is the financial uh, regulatory authority that governs licensed advisors like myself, uh, where you can do what's called a broker check. Make sure you check out any advisor that's trying to give you advice and make sure their record is clean. And there's also a link for you to contact me via that website. You can also contact me directly by emailing me at wgiles at gileswm.com. And my phone number, which you can text or give me a call, 804-914-1204. Again, 804-914-1204. Uh, make sure if you're leaving a message or if you're texting me to get that special deal, half off my fee, uh, you definitely let me know that you're a part of the homecoming uh, crowd and you saw this, uh, this interview and you'd like to take advantage of that. Um, and I look forward to talking to all of you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Giles. We appreciate your time, your expertise. You shared some very valuable information with our viewers. And I, it is my prayer that they will be reaching out to you soon. We truly appreciate you. We thank you again. And God bless. God bless you all as well. Thank you. Hey, family, this is Pastor Gilliam. I'm so excited. Um, that you've taken some time out to join us for our virtual homecoming festival. And I'm so excited today uh, to have this opportunity to share with Ms. Lisa Thompson, uh, who is uh, with Child Savers, which is an organization here in Church Hill uh, that deals with child therapy, um, as well as early development practices for children. And so, um, Ms. Thompson, thank you so much for joining us and for having this conversation today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to share more about our agency with you and your, and your church. And also, um, just want to give you uh, a hope that you have a blessed virtual homecoming. I understand this is all new for everyone, yeah. but the great thing is that even with technology, God's work can go forward. Well, today, and tell us a little bit about um, Child Savers. Like, how long have you been with Child Savers? Kind of what the overall mission and um, and and goal of Child Savers is, um, and kind of how things work there. Child Savers actually started in 1924. You know, some things come to full circle, and actually, it started because of the first flu pandemic in 1918. Wow. Um, and we had, um, you know, a psychiatrist who was trying to figure out how can she help children in the East End. 
who uh, were becoming orphans due to losing their parent or extended families due to the flu pandemic. So um, here we are now in, in, a, in a new pandemic and Child Savers has withstood all of those stumbling blocks to get us here. And um, the great thing about Child Savers is that we are one of those hidden secrets in Churchill. And we're hoping that today we can unveil some of those hidden gems that we have and that your members and your congregation will get to know more about Child Savers and seek us out more. But Child Savers' mission is that we got our children, our community's children, through life critical moments and trauma-informed mental health and child development services. So we have two different departments. We have our mental health, in which we provide therapy for children who need um, assistance with just processing everyday life issues. Um, and we work with children from age two to 18. Um, all of our um, clinicians that we have here are licensed clinicians. Um, they, all of them have gone through trauma-informed training. So they have that special lens that they can pull out and, and put on, for lack of a better term, um, when they're working with children who have experienced some issues in their community, they maybe have seen um, violence, that, that violence could be that they've seen someone, you know, get shot, get killed. Um, they may have experienced domestic violence in their home. Um, they may have been experienced being bullied in school. Um, so our therapists can help children process and bounce back from those um, unfortunate situations. And then we also have our child development services department. And that's the, the, the department in which I manage. And so um, we actually work with all of the state initiatives for early care. And so we help a child care um, center or we help a family child care provider just improve the services that they currently provide to their families. And so what do I mean by that? Um, if you want to spruce up your environment so that your environment is more um, conducive to the children you have in care, and you're not sure how to do that, we can help you do that. If you want to um, receive training, um, maybe you want to receive a training on math, um, work, working with children on math skills, we can provide you with, with that type of um, training. Maybe you want to provide more healthy and nutritional meals to children. We can help you look. We can help you by looking at your menus, making sure that your menus meet the USDA criteria. We can also um, help you start your own business. You know, this is a great time to become an entrepreneur. So, if you have someone who have always desired to care for children and didn't know how to take that first step, Child Savers can help you with that first step. Um, so what are some so what are some things we can help our parents and our, our guardians and those who will be caring for our children in this virtual season? What are some things that we can share with them about, you know, kind of setting up um, a learning environment in their home for their child so they can be as successful as possible? Sure. So, Pastor Gillum, the first thing I would encourage everyone is to give yourself grace. This is new for all of us. It's new for the parent. It's new for the child. Give yourself grace every day. Um, and then after you do that, then let's look at the environment. So try to find ways where you can designate a space in your home where your child and or children can truly have some uninterrupted time. And I realize that many of us don't have an endless bank account. So you can't go out and just buy all these wonderful new things that you see on Pinterest or Facebook to set up an environment. But how can you create just a little nook? And so that nook could be that maybe you go and buy a trifold. Um, many of us had to do presentations. Um, yeah. So buy a little yeah. trifold and let and let the child decorate that trifold to help mimic how maybe their environment would have looked at their school. And then put that trifold up throughout the day. And that that now becomes Lisa's desk for four hours. And everything that Lisa needs for those four hours should be within reach for me. And then that's a barrier so that I can block out other distractions. And that's the key point. It's gonna be difficult, I recognize that, for parents to be at home trying to work in school and, and, and the child being home trying to conduct schoolwork. But if all possible, limit any type of background noise. You know, Make sure the TV is off, make sure the radio is off. 
um, allow your child the opportunity to take breaks. Recognize that. If you see that your child is starting to wander, allow them to say, okay, unplug for five minutes, get up, move, run in place, go get some water, go outside and, 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 and inhale some fresh air. Just allow your child to figure out how this new norm is going to work for that child. And if you have more than one child, it's going to be different. Again, I'm going back to give each person grace. Um, also, what I would encourage you to do is look at the lighting. So many times when we're trying to work, we're in a dark space. Make sure that you have, if you don't have natural lighting, like you can see from my window, add some artificial lighting. So children have lighting so that they can focus. That's the key, helping them focus. Finally, make sure each child starts their day off with a healthy nutritional meal. Make sure they have breakfast. Um, Although they're at home, you may think oh, they can get a, they can get breakfast when they want to know. Keep them on a schedule. If they would have normally had breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning before you took them to school or before the bus came to pick them up, keep that schedule now. Make sure that they have nutritional meals throughout the day. So have conversations with your child and or children. And try to figure out and navigate this together. This is new for everyone. And so tell us more about um, some of the conversations that Child Savers will be hosting over the next um, few months as everybody's getting adjusted to uh, this virtual learning space. Sure. So Child Savers, along with a lot of the East End churches, um, we're, we're going to work on providing some type of training each week to help, hopefully, your congregation and many other congregations navigate this uncharted territory that we are all in. And so we're looking at maybe one week to have a conversation again about what are some signs to look for in your child to make sure that they're not experiencing trauma. Um, we're also going to have a training one week to talk about how can you start your own in-home business or how can you become an entrepreneur? Or if you are already a family child care or center in the East End, how can you improve the services? Um, we're also going to look at, again, just school readiness, making sure that your child has the tools that he or she needs to be successful. Those are just some of the topics that we're thinking about offering the month of September at no cost. And I want to say that again, at no cost. Um, the only cost you're going to have to um, incur is your time. Good deal. Yeah, I'm looking forward to us having these conversations. And Well, Ms. Thompson, thank you so much for the time that you shared with us. Can you tell us just a little bit about how we can connect with Child Savers, where we can find um, uh, your information uh, online and how we can get in touch if we find ourselves in need of services and resources. Absolutely. So we have a couple of different ways you can find us. Um, we have a website, childsavers.org. We're also on Facebook, Child Savers. We also have an Instagram account, which is the Overlook. Um, we are located right here in Churchill, so at 200 North 22nd Street. They're more than welcome to just come down to Child Savers, and I'll be here to help them out. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Thompson, for sharing your time, for sharing a lot of great information um, about Child Savers and the great work that you all are doing um, to, to kind of help our young people uh, and, and help families in, in the Churchill area and beyond throughout the region. So uh, we're grateful for your time. Sounds great. Looking forward to the partnership. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me. My name is April. I am the owner of April Shower Skin Care Natural Beauty and Love. I created a 100% natural and organic skincare line to help focus on the skin care and self care within our community. Um, to me, the two go hand in hand together. You can't focus on yourself without focusing on your skin. You can't focus on your skin without focusing on yourself. And I wanted to create something that went together. Hence the reason April Shower Skin Care was born on May the 3rd, 2020. She's a baby. She's new. She's still fresh. Um, April Shower Skin Care was also created as another avenue of income for myself. I do work in corporate America. I have been working since I was 15. And with the climate change and the pandemic and everything, I wanted to have something for myself as well as to leave generational wealth for my children. So April Shower Skin Care was created. With my natural 
an organic skincare line, I will have a consult with you to see, you know, what it is that you're trying to combat. If you have actual skin issues, whether it be eczema, psoriasis, um, oily skin, dry skin, maybe you have an oily face like myself and dry skin on your body, something that can help with that. So I will have a cons consult with you to see exactly what it is that you're looking for as far as your daily skin care regimen and also to help you create a daily skin care regimen. Some of us don't have a daily skin care regimen. We may only wash our face when it's dirty or oily or we've been sweating a lot or, you know, before we go somewhere, before we take pictures. And with April Shower Skin Care, I want to get everyone in the habit of having a daily skin care regimen and a daily self-care regimen. Now, self-care doesn't always mean going to get your hair done, going to get nails or shoes, or for my guys, it doesn't always mean um, going to spend $200 on the fresh sneakers. Sometimes self-care means just taking a moment to yourself, whether it be 30 minutes to an hour to two hours, to reflect, meditate, and speak affirmations over yourself in your life. And that's what April Shower Skin Care focuses on. With that being said, I'm going to share with you guys some of my products that I have I'm just kidding. and I wanted to share with you some of the products that April Shower Skin Care offers. We have handmade soaps. We have detox clay face mask. We have foot soaks. Sorry, couldn't get that off. <laughs> we have detox feet mask you know maybe you may have you may be someone who works on your feet all day you might want to take a moment soak your feet with your foot soak and detox that day away and other stress that may have been ailing you you put use your foot mask we also have detox body soaps we have face wash body wash bath bombs you might want to take a bath and soak meditate, relax, and speak affirmations over yourself after a long, hard day of work or before you even go to work. I also offer sage. You may need some spiritual cleaning. You may have some negative energy you've been combating, you know, for the last couple of months with everyone being at home and locked down during a pandemic. And you might want to get that energy out of your home. You may be moving into a new home. You may be about to start a new job. With this, you'll be able to speak affirmations of yourself, say a prayer for what you want and what you expect in your life. And I'm a true believer. If you speak it in your words, oh wait, it will come true. We also have bath teas. You can put this over your water faucet, let the water run over it, and relax in a bath. And again, meditate, pray, speak affirmations over yourself. So April Shower Skin Care has a variety of products for you. I just wanted to show you a few. I know I didn't touch on everything. However, I can go over each and every product I offer with you during a consult. Thank you so much for having me this evening. You guys have a great day. Hey, family. We're excited today um, to continue to bring you these great interviews with great business owners, entrepreneurs around our city, around our region. Uh, and today uh, we have Ms. Lakeisha Goodman uh, with us from RVA Superior Cleaning. Ms. Goodman, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes um, to share with us today um, and to talk with our, um, you know, with our audience, with our church family and those who will be watching on Facebook, YouTube um, to share more about uh, more about your business. So just tell us a little bit about RVA Superior Cleaning, um, you know, kind of how you got started and kind of the things that you offer and, and what you do. OK, um, so I introduced to you RVA Superior Cleaning, LLC. I am the owner, Lakeisha Rose Goodman, um, and do we do have a mission statement. Um, we provide extraordinary, professional, and reliable janitorial services um, that will provide a variety of cleaning services that both meets and exceeds our customer expectations by taking a proactive approach and defining their needs and building the best partnering relationship possible. Um, we also are committed to acting with honesty and integrity at all times in all aspects of our businesses and always delivering a consistent high level of quality of work. Um, this business was established um, 2018. Um, I was inspired by my father. He had a cleaning company um, growing up um, 
I grew up, was born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, grew up, you know, in a large family. And we also helped him occasionally clean churches, clean houses. And I also volunteered to help the elderly um, clean their house. So I was kind of inspired by that. And as I got older, I, you know, took it upon myself to learn from him and decided to branch out on my own. Um, and this is how I became our VA Superior Cleaner. So um, we do offer services. Um, we offer spring cleaning. We offer regular contracts, move in and move out cleaning. We also do pre and after party cleaning, post construction cleaning, pre house sale cleaning. And we offer that weekly, bi weekly, monthly, and also a one time cleaning. Oh, wow. So you are you really, really cover the gamut in terms of, you know, the services that you offer, um, as well as just being like really a homegrown, you know, kind of generational, you know, generational legacy type thing, yes. which is an amazing, uh, yeah. an amazing thing and an amazing, uh, amazing thing that you learned from your father and been able to carry that on. Um, do you now do you all service just residential properties or do you do residential and commercial? Uh, how does that work? Yes, we do residential and commercial. Um, so, you know, um, I do have contact information for anybody that wants to, um, receive our services. So we do op offer both. So, yes, yeah, so we are in the midst of this crazy time with COVID-19 and, um, and, and this pandemic that has kind of altered the way that we, you know, kind of live and do, do things in our world. Um, and particularly of, of utmost importance is, um, you know, keeping things clean around the house, keeping things clean, um, you know, in the various places where, that we go in stores, we see, you know, hand sanitizer stations. But what are some of the best practices that you could offer, you know, just for helping us to um, keep our homes clean and sanitized so that we can be as safe as possible during the pan pandemic? Okay, so we offer deep cleaning and regular standard cleaning. Um, so during this pandemic, our company is just offering deep cleaning for every cleaning, whether it's one time, monthly, bi-weekly, we're going to offer deep cleaning every time just to ensure that your family is safe um, and just protect it from um, any viruses um, and also a pl your place of employment. If you have a business that wants to be clean, it's going to be deep cleaning every time um, during this pandemic. Okay. And that deep cleaning is there, is there like a special or different types of chemicals that are used um, during that deep cleaning? So like that makes it different than just a, a regular cleaning? Um, basically it's the same cleaning. We do offer uh, different equipment and different types of cleaning material if you request it, but we will originally use our uh, basic cleaning material, uh, but we're going to do actually a more in-depth cleaning um, as far as uh, more interior, more on surface inside of um, appliances and things like that, that we usually do for deep cleaning, we're going to do it every time for you. Got you. Okay. That makes sense. And that, and that absolutely would help with, you know, kind of keeping the spread of um, the coronavirus down in homes and places of, you know, worship and businesses um, uh, alike. So, uh, so that's a great thing. Uh, well, we're really appreciative of the time that you've been able to share with us today um, and learning more about RVA Superior Cleaning. Uh, is there, could you give us some information um, about any special offers that you have right now? I know you mentioned the deep cleaning piece. Um, any special offers and then how, um, how our uh, audience can connect with you, um, you know, via, you know, phone call website or, or whatever the case is, if they want to set up a consultation um, and become a customer of REA Superior Cleaning. Yes. Um, so we have a first time cleaning special. Uh, we also do military discounts, senior citizen discount. Uh, we also do referral discounts. Um, and then when you contact me, we will go over your um, your business needs and special requests. Um, I can come in and give free estimates. Um, so you can reach me at RVA cleaning at yahoo.com or you can reach me on Facebook at RVA Superior Cleaning LLC. All right. Great deal. Well, we're so excited to learn more about your business and we thank you for spending the time with us today. Um, and hopefully our audience will be reaching out so that we can make sure that we're safe and sanitized during this season. Thanks so much Ms. Goodman, for your time. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you so much.
Mere, mere. Yeah. The earth is shaking. Yeah. Who gon' save the babies? Yeah. From another bloody Sunday. I'm singing Mere, mere. Yeah. They love me or they hate me. Yeah. For my skin color. Yeah. But you say I am your brother. Yes. The government keep lying to me. Telling me that they come to set the people free But the power falls when you catch us on the knees Heaven please, we're in a state of emergency See, we need a strong God, yeah We need the real God, yeah The God with the resurrection power from the grave Take away the hate to heal the human race, yeah We need a We need a We need a We need a strong God, so we we need a, we need a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, mere, mere. They said the climate changing, the poor people in the cold. But you keep preaching to they soul. But we don't leave till everybody's free, and we won't sleep till everybody eats. Yeah, yeah. Until lives matter. More than times matter The government keep lying to me Telling me that they gonna set the people free But the power falls when you catch us on the knees Heaven please, we're in a state of emergency See, we need a Strong God Real strong, yeah We need a Real God Yeah, yeah The God with the resurrection power from the grave To take away the hate To heal the human race See, we need a we need a, we need a, we need a strong God. So we need a, we need a, we need a. Let's go. We want justice, we want change, we want peace and no more pain. We want to be free, we want to be free. Martin's dream is what I need. We want justice, we want change, we want peace and no more pain. Don't preach the gospel. Be the gospel. My country, tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty. When will we finally see? We need a strong God. Yeah. The government keep lying to me. Telling me that they gonna set the people free But the power falls when you catch us on the knees Oh, not heaven please, we're in a state of emergency Cause we need a strong God, yeah We need the real God The God with the resurrection power from the grave To take away the hate, to heal the human race So we need a, we need a, we need a We need a strong God Hey family, this is Pastor Gilliam just checking in with you. I want to make sure that you are enjoying what you're singing thus far um, in our virtual homecoming festival. Listen, we've heard a lot of great information uh, today so far. So many different things that we can learn from, that we can connect with. And so we're hoping that you will take advantage of this opportunity to support uh, these black owned businesses, to reach out to these resource providers in our community, and potentially to hook up uh, with some of those who have been sharing their talents and their gifts with us over the course of, their time, of this time together. Uh, listen, if you go in our video description, you will find connections and links to each one uh, of our vendors here that have Facebook pages so that we can ensure that you are connected with them, that you are supporting them uh, in this effort. This is why we're doing this because we want to be a part of promoting uh, entrepreneurship, promoting healthy communities, promoting um, people who are uh, doing great things to help us to be better. Listen, I want to give a special shout out um, to our team that put this together um, to um, 
uh, to First Lady Jen, uh, who did a phenomenal job with uh, with conducting interviews, and um, she's so poised and talented. Uh, so we're grateful for her as well as um, to Deacons Brenda Carter to. Um, Sister Giovanni Armstead Tucker, as well as Brother Lynn Wright for helping us to contact vendors uh, and put this whole piece together. Listen, we are trying to do all that we can to make sure that our community is empowered, that they're knowledgeable, um, and that we are taking care of one another. So listen, I hope that you enjoy the rest of the vendors and those who will be sharing with us uh, great information today um, that will help us to be better and that are exposing us to opportunities that are new in our community, all right? So listen, enjoy the rest of the time together and we'll see you at the end. I now have Mrs. Devon Copeland and Mrs. Angela Rhodes from Iron Village Academy here with me today. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Tell me a little bit about who you are as individuals and how Iron Village Academy was created. Sure. Well, I'm Devin Copeland, like you said, and I am a communications and marketing professional um, with a reporting background. Um, and I've been involved in education, marketing, recruiting, and education communications for roughly 15 years. Okay. I am Angela Rhodes, and I have been a math teacher. Uh, well, this I am entering my 11th year um, as a math teacher, high school level. So I've taught everything from pre-algebra, pre-algebra to advanced algebra and trigonometry. Um, I really enjoy what I do. I have taught in both North Carolina and Virginia. So this is my fifth year, I think, almost going into my fifth year in Virginia. Okay, awesome. And about so, Iron Village? Yes, yeah, so we started Iron Village, um, which is a K through five academic enrichment program focusing on black children in the Richmond area that will be launching this fall. And it was really born from a desire to create a space where our children as mothers are affirmed and have access to a very intentional education that's focused on um, building them up and giving them a greater understanding about what our community has contributed to this country. Um, and so we thought, you know, not only do we want to create that space for our own children, but we thought just in the, the landscape that we are in, in this country, that this would be a, we're in a pivotal moment. I, we really feel like that, that time to really pour into our children and bring back more of a community school feel where, where the village right. is pouring into your children and the village is helping you build up the adults that we want to see walking around in this world. Um, so we decided let's start a let's start a program that will ultimately grow to be a school. Incredible. That's good. Um, so I know you said you will be launching in the fall. So tell us kind of like what a day would look like within Iron Village Academy. And also, I know a lot of people are concerned because of the pandemic about safety measures. So what safety measures are in place? specifically during the day? Absolutely. So we have discussed um, a few things, right? Because we have, first of all, we are very excited to be able to launch actually in person. And so with that being said, we have reached out to a lot of what we've designated as professionals as it relates to daycares who have stayed open during this entire pandemic with um, no cases um, and have not had to shut down and the things that they've put in place. We've also reached out to a professional cleaning service. So with some of those things in mind, um, and utilizing the space, we have mapped out ways for students to have very limited interactions with one another, um, where we've literally mapped out their paths. Um, we have also made sure that when our students come in, everyone will have a designated box of things. And this will include everything from, you know, like if they need a tissue and to resharpen their pencil, if they need to, um, you know, like use uh, some of the manipulatives that we may have, construction paper, white paper, everything will be in a labeled box for each student so that there is no sharing, right? So then there's also the teaching of like, we know that and up until now, we have always taught that sharing was going to be caring, but now we have to take these precautions because of the time that we are in. And so we're placing a big emphasis on what it will look, for, look like for us to now extend empathy to others because we don't want to give the germs to others. 
as far as a typical day for the school, um, we will be doing a drop off and pick up outside. So parents and guardians will not be coming inside. We will meet their child at the door. Um, we will do temperature checks, wellness checks, um, just to make sure that we are all entering the space at our best full health. Um, upon entering, um, there will be a specific space for extra belongings. So if you had to wear a coat that morning, we're not taking them into the general space. If, um, you know, like we're going to make sure that hands are washed, sanitized before you even enter the space and that we're all following um, the path that we need to do to get to our tables. And so once inside the space, we kind of have it broken up into like a three uh, 45 minute, three different 45 minute chunks of time where the first 45 minutes we intend to spend time working with students in very small groups on whatever it is that they're doing in their actual classrooms. Um, we have things set in place where we will be able to reach out to those specific teachers of the children so that we can make sure that whatever they have for homework or assignments coming up that we're actually getting those things done. The second 45 minute chunk will be dedicated to the Iron Village curriculum. And so we want to make sure that we are pouring into them the things that Devin mentioned, right? The intentionality of teaching to our community. And then we'd really like for our third 45 minute chunk to be this time for students to have some level of choice, or this is where we have incorporated some other community sponsors where we can do socially distanced and outside activities, where it be yoga, where it be um, some other skills where each quarter we are able to offer extracurricular things so that students and parents will have the opportunity to be exposed to something else without having the head without having to do the work of hustling your child to get to another hustling and bustling to get to another location to do another activity and so yeah. um, those three 45 minute chunks obviously with the transitions in there is how we plan to execute our day-to-day -day operation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I, I want to ask another question because you mentioned something key and I know because I'm a parent. Um, what is the ratio right now? And then also, um, what is your target as far as grade level and student? So we'll be doing K through five. And because not only because of the pandemic, but just because of what we want to, the children to be exposed to and what we want the children to experience, we are launching small. Um, so we'll be doing to within that K through five, there will be three pods. So there'll be a kindergarten, first grade pod. There'll be a second grade, third grade pod, and there'll be a fourth grade, fifth grade pod. So that gives a little bit of overlap and gives us a little bit of flexibility in terms of if you're a sec, if you're a third grader that's still, you know, working on some of those second grade skills, but it also gives a second grader a little, you know, they, they can kind of level up a little bit and be exposed to some of what they'll be, what they would be experiencing in a classroom in the third grade. Um, but we're, we're planning on, you know, a, a 15 kids, you know, no more than 15 kids and hoping to keep it to three to five kids within each of those pods. So we want to be very focused. It's going to be, you know, small teacher child ratios, which you just can't be in terms of tutoring your child. Um, like Angela talked about how we're going to have that first 45 where we're focusing on Virginia standards of learning. And we have that, that dialogue going with the parents and with their teacher in their respective classrooms so that we know where their, where their pain points are, where there's some areas for them to grow in and how we can help with that. Okay, that's awesome because that that to me offers an another letter another level of intentionality about you know Absolutely. getting across to those students as well as those parents. So that's really good. Absolutely. So, Angela and Devin, how can people um, learn more about Iron Village Academy? Do you have a Facebook website, um, Instagram page that everyone can follow? So let us know what it is. Yeah, so we definitely have an Instagram page. Um, please follow us. Uh, check us out at Iron Village Prep 804. That is our Instagram handle. And then also on Facebook, we are Iron Village Preparatory Academy. Um, and definitely on Facebook, you can receive the updates um, that we are going to be releasing. And also go ahead and join our wait list. Um, by going ahead and joining our wait list, you will be allowing yourself additional information, especially when we begin our village chats that will be releasing out or rolling out in September. And so that will basically be intimate conversations for us to be able to dialogue with parents, answer conversations, and kind of just model and facilitate what it will actually look like um, so that parents can know and feel good about the decision that they're going to make. 
Okay, good. That's just a couple of days away, folks. So you make sure you head on over to their website <laughs> yeah. or to their Facebook page, to their Instagram page, so you can follow what's going on with Iron Village Academy. Devin and Angela, I truly thank you so much for being here with us today during our virtual homecoming festival. Um, it is truly our prayer that Iron Village Academy will be a major success. Okay. Thank you. Thank God you bless so much. you. And thank you so much. Thank you thank for having you. us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. One. Hey, family. Uh, glad you all are here and hope you're enjoying our virtual homecoming festival here for TMCBC. Uh, for our virtual homecoming 2020. And listen, I'm excited today uh, to have Chef Charles in the building with me, Chef Charles Robinson. Um, man, he is, listen, listen, let me tell y'all something. Listen, listen. <laughs> this brother right here can cook. I'm just, I want to cook like him. Right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, but yeah, so he's an executive chef, man. He has his own seasoning line. We're going to talk more about that as we get into the interview. But thanks, man, for joining us Appreciate and being you. a part of the festival today. So tell us a little bit about you know, your product and, and, and what you're doing. Um, once again, thank y'all for having me. Um, love the work y'all are doing here first off. Um, my name is Charles Robinson, executive chef, Sunday service soul food. Also the uh, creator of Black Folk Food. Um, Black Folk Food is a brand, um, it's a cultural movement. Um, started organically. I started, you know, just on Instagram, you know, changed my Instagram name to Black Folk Food one day. Yeah. It resonated. Um, and from there, uh, created, you know, home dishes, cooking for people, going mm -hmm. to people's homes, um, and, you know, just being socially aware as well. Sure. You know, um, my, my, one of my favorite things to talk about is food, um, and also, um, the black community. Yeah. So yeah. how can I merge those two things together? Um, what way, what better way? Then you know over a meal, Absolutely. you know. So you know, that's how we do it, right, right, right. It's, you know, we always come together. We eat, we feed each other, and I just wanted to feed the community with um, good food um, and also good conversations. That's yeah. when I, you know, push us forward as a community. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah, we so, so I'm telling you, man. My family is a huge fan of a black folk food <laughs> seasoning. Listen, yeah, yeah. you can put it on everything. everything. You can put it on popcorn. Mm -hmm. You can put it on pizza. You can put it on anything you, you want to throw You can put it on your bread. communion chips. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all mess around first Sunday, y'all see that little season. Right <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, I mean, the season is incredible. Yeah. Like, kind of tell us just a little bit about how you got into um, putting that seasoning blend together. Right. Um, well, as I was saying, like I was always going to people's homes and cooking for them. Um, I would come in and, you know, go into people's spice cabinets. And, you know, normally they wouldn't have what I had. Mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Or, you know, so what I started doing, instead of carrying my whole spice rack with me, I just made like a, a season all, mm -hmm. you know, things of my yeah. favorite blends that I could, you know, just have with me. And then when I go into somebody's home, I can kind of season up from there. You right, know what I mean? With right. the spices they enjoy that we're already using in their yeah, home. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times, you know, people just want me to cook for them and cook for them, cook for them. But my passion has never really been cooking for people. Um, it's mainly been showing people how to cook for themselves. Uh, that's, that's you know what I mean? Yeah, man. yeah, it's a huge yeah. difference. You know, so um, what this product has allowed me to do, like it happened organically. Um, I was going into people's homes. And, you know, I would season up and, you know, they'd be like, yo, can you leave a little bit of that with me? You know, cool, here you go. Yeah. You know, and then I started getting phone calls like, you got any more, you know? <laughs> and, um, like, you know, just kind of hit in my head, like, you know, if it's something that people want, um, how could I get it to them? Right. Um, you know, started working on it, making sure it was blending correctly, all of that good stuff, yeah. making sure I could source it. Um, got with a, a graphic designer. We talked about the label, um, got that in place and... Initially, you know, I, I started with 24 bottles back in March. Wow. Um, I did a short run just seeing if, how it would go. And like in yeah. two hours, those 24 bottles were gone. Yeah. So, you know, that wasn't a big deal. You know, that doesn't sound like a big deal to a lot of people, but I automatically knew there was a demand for it. Right. Um, so, you know, I got back in the kitchen, you know, whipping up more spices, you know, um, ordering more bottles. And I kind of came into a... a um, a snag because you know during COVID, um, you know the mail wasn't running. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Things yeah, like yeah. that. So I, I just had to find unique ways to source my product, um, streamline a little bit better. You know, got the website pumping. Yeah. Um, we're now uh, I want to say twelve hundred bottles deep. You wow. know, so um, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Yeah. You know, and like you know that's a, a a small number to some, but 
you know, when you're a startup business, yeah. when you um, already, you know, are working for yourself in other avenues, um, just to have that kind of run on the seasoning and, and have it, you know, back ordered. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a blessing in itself. Yeah. So um, I'm thankful. Um, I know the product's needed. Um, the, the, the conversation around the product has been very healthy. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, we're just going to keep running it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Now, there's two things that I want you to talk quickly about. Um, one is the Monday Supper Club. Mm. And then, two, the new thing that you just, like, yeah. as of today, as right. of when we're recording this, you just released it. This will be coming out in the month of September. So I want you to share about both mm -hmm. of those things just so our folks can know um, about you know, the th other things that you have that you've been working on and that you're offering for uh, for folks to uh, partake in. So the Monday Supper Club is something that started during COVID, actually. Like, um, people were at home, you know, restaurants were closed down, and I was getting phone calls saying, like, are you cooking? Yeah. You know, um, and I, you know, at the time, you know, my restaurant was closed down, you know what I mean? Like, and we were just like, okay, well, if you if that's what you want, we can figure out a way to kind of do drops, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. um, on, on we've made it a Monday thing. I would go in and, you know, started with lobster macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Kind of the same way. Like, you know, it started with like four orders. That four orders over two weeks with that, that lobster mac grew to 80 orders. Wow. You know, yeah. and then um, I had people hit me up like, well, I'm allergic to, you know what I mean, seafood. <laughs> what are you going to do next week? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? So um, the supper club idea is something that I always wanted to do as far as um, in the future, you know, having an actual real live supper club mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this just kind of gave me an avenue to play with the menu see what people were liking right. and go about it that way um so that that's every monday um you can go to blackfolkfood.market and uh, figure out what the menu is for the monday you order your your meal online it gets delivered to you on on, on the next monday or you can pick it up from the restaurant um the autumn clover spice is um a fall blend um Similar to a pumpkin spice that we, you know, we love all around you. A lot of those great brown spices, yeah. cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, you know, ginger. Um, a lot of things that are good for us as melanated people Absolutely. as well. Yeah. Um, but the the name Autumn Clover came from um, an infant loss that my wife and I experienced mm -hmm. back in 2014. Wow. Um, that was a traumatic experience for us both. But what I learned during that experience is that there weren't a lot of resources for men. Mm -hmm. All of the resources seemed to be geared towards the mother and for women, what to right. expect, you know what I mean? What yeah. to avoid, yeah. um, all of those things, but necessarily didn't focus on how men grieve right. or you know the, the, the pieces we were gonna have to pick up. Yeah. Um, I, I noticed that I was in a space where um, I was having to be there for her, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? In every capacity, I, I had to go back to work. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't have the chance to grieve in the way I thought I needed yeah. um, at the yeah. time, but um, this spice has allowed me a opportunity to, number one, commemorate my, my daughter, yeah. who's not here with us, and also start the conversation with men, and black men specifically, yeah. um, who have experienced infant loss, <clears throat> Um, and, and didn't have an outlet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I knew many women who had experienced infant loss or, or, or loss of a toddler, but um, there's always a man on the other side of that, right. you know? Right. Um, and the, the notion is that our, our men are, uh, we experience less emotion yeah. in those spaces and um, we just kind of, you know, we're more robotic right. in that space and it's not true. Not at all. Not at all. Not at so, all. Um, this has just given me an opportunity to um, have that conversation. Um, that's going to launch September 8th. Um, the order will go out. I'm only doing 100 bottles. Um, it's going to be 1022. The price is 1022 online. Um, that is to commemorate my daughter's birthday as well, October 22nd. Um, most of my spices are only $8. So $2.22. From um, the Autumn Clover Spice is going to go to a mental health organization, a local mental health organization right here in Richmond. Cool. So um, we're going to donate that. Um, you're also a part of a conversation yeah. that you know we're putting together right yeah. now, yeah. Um, where we're going to have uh, black men coming together, um, enjoying a meal, cooking it together, yeah. you know, and having this conversation. Um, hopefully, to provide some sort of healing and start conversations because as I begin to look for organizations to. Um, donate to there were none yeah you know so i you know that's a space that needs to be filled um i don't know how we're going to do that quite yet but 
Um, this is the initial um, launch, and hopefully, you know, this gets into the right hands where we can make some things happen. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and I just love the concept of um, of the spice being named after Autumn, mm -hmm. and, um, and 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 having this conversations for men because again, like mental health. For men, it's something that we don't really talk about a at all. Black, it's, it's, it's a huge um, stigma in the community. Yeah, it's you know it's what already I mean? a stigma in the black community, right. and particularly for black men. So, um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to be a part of the conversation. Yeah. Uh, having you know myself and my wife have an experience experience that I suffer as well, um, but also just excited to see where it goes, right, um, right. And see how we can you know kind of open a conversation for more men to kind of right. just deal with that emotional aspect. Um, and not be, as you said, like the robot, you know, right. feel like they got to be in that role. So, man, that's incredible, man. You got so many great things going <laughs> yeah, on, yeah. so many awesome things that um, that our folks should be, y'all should be, man, I'm telling you, y'all should be logging on blackfoodfood.market, right. ready, putting your orders right. in for the, for the Black Folk Food seasoning, yeah. for the Monday Supper Club, and you should circle the calendar, put a reminder in your phone right now, September 8th, uh, for when the Autumn Clover Spice uh, will drop. Um, uh, from from Black Folk Food. So listen, um, before we close out, just tell everybody really quickly where where they can find you, mm -hmm. um, where they can, how they can connect with you on social media, where you're cooking, and all of those things. Um, Black Folk Food, everything um, on Facebook, Black Folk Food, all one word. Um, Instagram, Black Folk Food, and www.blackfolkfood.market. You can find everything you need to know in those spaces. Um, it's something I want to do for you guys. Uh, or here at the Mount. At the Mount. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know y'all are going to have this um, virtual homecoming. I'm going to do a special promo code um, for you and um, your parishioners. Cool. You know, so Appreciate when they that. go to uh, order, they can put in the promo code, get a nice discount. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That 10%. You know what I mean? I think I'm going to do 20. I'm going to do 20 for you guys. Except for that. No 20% on the Autumn Clover. Right. No yeah, 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 yeah. Clover. We got to get That's the donations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. um, the black folk food, we're going to do 20%. Cool. That's because I haven't been tithing. So I'm going to do That's my 10. <laughs> we appreciate That's my 10 as we well. Appreciate so um, we're going to make that happen for you guys. Word. Sure. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. So listen, be on the lookout right, right below, right on the screen. You'll see the promo code. You'll see all of the ways to connect with Chef Charles uh, and black folk food. Yeah. Also, you can find them at Sunday Service Soul Food. Correct. Sunday Service Soul Food out uh, in the White Oak area um, in Henrico County. Well, look, Chef Charles, man, thank you so much for taking time out to share and talk with us um, and to share just, you know, the great things that you're doing um, and, and your products with, with our folks here at Mount Carmel and with the greater community at large. Appreciate y'all. Thank All you. Right. All right. All right, family. Hey, this is Pastor Gillian. We are here today with Miss Andrea Burke, uh, who is the um, founder, CEO, head honcho of the Bowden Academy, which is a performing arts school here in the city of Richmond. Along with that, she's also a um, teacher in Richmond Public Schools and um, all the things fine arts here uh, in the city. So, Miss Burke, thank you so much for taking time out to talk with us today. Thank you. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well, doing well. Listen, so tell us a little bit about the Bowdoin Academy. Like, how did it get started? What are some of the things that you all offer? So the Bowdoin Academy was established in August of 2015. Um, it was developed to offer quality, affordable arts instruction. Um, I, I had a mission to provide a space and opportunity for students to be able to experience private instruction in violin and piano and voice uh, lessons without having to be concerned about cost. That's good stuff right there. And, and definitely access to those things so many, so many times are determined by people's, you know, economic um, kind of station in life. And so being able to make those things accessible to, to all people are really, really important. Um, so I heard you say you do um, violin, piano, voice, any other things that you all, um, any other kind of classes or courses that you all have offered or are offering currently? Yes, we, uh, before the pandemic, we offered uh, ensemble instruction in, uh, so we had a string ensemble, uh, a vocal or chorus, it was a small chorus um, ensemble. We also offered uh, private piano instruction where we had instructors go out into the community. They would go to churches, they would go into, uh, if, if you need them to come to your home, they would be there. Um, or you could come to the actual studio and, and take private piano. We also offer uh, step classes or instruction in step, which is like body percussion, um, mm -hmm. if you're not familiar. 
Um, and we also offer dance classes. So we, we have a creative dance class and that's for beginning dancers or um, little dancers as we call them. Uh, and we have liturgical dance, hip hop and jazz. Oh, cool. So yeah, I've really run the gamut of uh, this performing arts thing, do yeah. everything, man. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and so I've heard you mention before the pandemic, um, you were able to do all of these things and have all of these, uh, you know, various offerings in, in your space and be able to offer this out to the community. So what kind of pivots have you been able to make um, during the pandemic to kind of still be able to offer some semblance of, you know, performing arts or even other instruction that might be helpful for um, for parents and for students who are in the Richmond area? So we, uh, for the, on the dance side, we offered virtu a virtual dance class during the summer. So it was a four week uh, workshop with an artist out of Baltimore cool. um, who currently resides in New York City, but she, um, Ms. Sanchelle Brown, she did an amazing job. Um, they learned uh, Afro beats. It was a mix of African dance and mm -hmm. hip hop. And it was an amazing workshop. Um, so we we're going to continue those kind of efforts for dance during the fall and the spring is until you know we're able to return to the studio with dance. Um, our step team, however, has um, or our step classes and our step team have to continue to practice. So we've been practicing with social distance, um, distancing outside, and mask and taking temperatures, but. Um, for the performing arts side, that's where we have limited our services to the virtual dance online and the step team or the step classes rehearsing outside. Um, we also had to decide what else we could offer the community because the major goal or the always the initial goal is to be a help. So we decided to offer distance learning support. So we developed the distance learning support program. Cool. Um, so tell me, tell us a little bit more, like about what that, what that um, distance support program kind of entails, and, and even how people may be able to take advantage of it. Okay, so the the distance learning support program involves um, student for it's developed for students who may not be able to stay at home because their parents have to go to work, mm -hmm. or parents are looking for extra help with the online learning format. Um, we have virtual support monitors who will guide students through their uh, online schedule of classes, helping with logins, helping with any technical issues, They're also tutors. Um, we have enrichment activities that we we offer when there's screen time, um, screen breaks or downtime, um, physical fitness, arts, um, STEM activities. We are also um, at, in our program making sure it's a point to uh, maintain social distancing, um, keep our, our facility sanitized and clean. Um, and we're just hoping to help parents and families make the best of this situation and letting everybody know it's only for a moment. This is not forever. Now that's good. And I think that's a, that's a great pivot to make, to be able to offer that support. There's so many parents that I'm sure um, that are, that are watching this right now that are here about this program that are like, man, I need this help. <laughs> uh, I got to go to work and I want to make sure my kids are doing what they have to do um, uh, in school. Uh, now you were tell talking about a step team um, just a few moments ago. Um, PST as they are known with a precision step team um, who is one of the dynamic step teams on the East Coast, um, travel up and down the East Coast and across the country, um, competing in competitions. Can you talk to us more about the step team and even some things you all have planned for this um, for this fall season? Absolutely. So the precision step team is the only, I love saying that, the only nationally ranked step team out of Richmond, Virginia. There are wow. other nationally ranked step teams, but in Richmond, Virginia and in the surrounding counties and the region, we are the only nationally ranked high school female step team. That's what's um, up. We do. We travel frequently up and down the East Coast, um, but we've been as far as Houston, Texas. And before COVID, we were traveling to Las Vegas, Nevada wow. to compete. So we, we, we travel all across the country um, to compete and to you know, share our talents and, and you know, see how we, we match up with the best in the country. Yeah. But um, 
it was developed, it wasn't developed solely as a step team. This uh, precision step team is a, a way to mentor young, uh, young women um, so that we could reach them in a different way as opposed to a, a normal mentorship program or an etiquette class or something like that. We're able to teach them through step. We're able to yeah. teach them about life. We're able to teach them and show them that it's not all about uh, your grade, but that's important. It's not all about uh, being or, or having fun and, and with your friends and everything. You can do that, too. When you put it all together, it's about balancing. It's about mm -hmm. teamwork. It's about hard work. It's about working hard first and then having fun second. So we were able to <laughs> we were able to do that with the step team. Um, Precision is also always looking for new members. We're always looking for new members. And it's not just uh, for high school students. Again, we offer instruction in body percussion yeah. or step. So um, that's the first way you, you are able to join. So you'd either be in the beginning class or um, intermediate or advanced class. And once you're in the advanced class, you can become a member of Precision Step Team. But our door is always open. We're always looking for new members. Um, in uh, October, we will be hosting... The, a step show called Step to Unite at Marcus David Peter Circle, formerly known as the Robert E. Lee Monument. Yeah. Um, we're so excited about that. We're going to have uh, Pastor Gilliam to speak. <laughs> that's going to be amazing because I already know that's going to be, you know, top notch. Uh, <laughs> address that you're going to deliver but, <laughs> anyway, cool. um, and so uh we're also having uh dj b sounds um you have teams from hampton roads coming um the icons lady icons you have a team from two teams from north carolina the mighty saints and lady firm um and then we have the dynamic angels that will be performing and a few other teams and uh different dance genres that will be participating uh, we're hoping to have a few other special guests appear and maybe cool. say, you know, address the, the audience. Um, but it's it's going to be a nice family event. It's going to be a great time for everybody. And um, we just are looking to bring a positive or a different positive uh, aspect to that environment uh, for the youth. Cool. Now that I'm I'm really looking forward to being a part um, being a part of that event. Well, Ms. Burke, thank you so much for sharing with us today. For you know, just telling us about the Bowden Academy, about you know, the virtual learning space, about Precision Step Team. Uh, just let us know where are some of the places, website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, other social media spaces where we can connect uh, with what the Bowden Academy is doing and what, what the Step Team is doing. We are all over social media, um, but if you are wanting to know about all of our programs that we have here at the Bolden Academy, you can find us at www.theboldenacademy.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at uh, the Bolden Academy. For the step team, if you're interested only in the step team, again, you can find us at www.theboldenacademy.org and also on Instagram and TikTok, uh, precision underscore step. Cool. Sounds good. Well, we'll make sure that we're following um, and hopefully folks will be getting connected um, with the Bolden Academy, with the step team and following all of the great things that you are doing and participating in the things that you have to offer um, uh, our young people here in the Richmond region. So Ms. Burke, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, and we hope that you have a great school year and we hope that this fall season is productive for you all. Thank you so much for having me. All right. You bet. I'm headed out to Quebec. I'm headed out to Quebec. This is a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, I ain't never been out the country before, man. From London to Patty. Now coming back home, I don't mind stopping off in Quebec. Uh. Got some business to handle anyway. What'd you say, dog? Yeah, I got it. Uh, 
I'm just filling in for my homie while I'm out in Quebec. Plus I got my own show tomorrow, you know I'm getting my check. I'm just filling in for my homie while I'm out in Quebec. And plus I got my own show tomorrow, you know I'm getting my check. So let's ride. North side, north side, oh, north side. Until I die, oh, uh, yo. Hey, I'm about to hit the mall and play for Diana Crawl. Have a martini, then gig it with Pat Metheny. All these jazz greats, but don't make a mistake. Cause I'm really just a rapper who sort of happens to play. Haters mad that I found a happy medium. Who else you know that's trying to be Biggie and Oscar Peterson? Leaving you with hope through notes until we meet again. I'm in my mean mode, but I'm likely to be a median. Uh, I'm about to take the mask off. I was done with being broke, I took the cast off. I grew up in the dark, but I still shine. That piano in the back, that's my real grind. Tuck's well pressed, yeah, I'm staying fresh. Me and V, we like Haji and Johnny Quest. Esperanza hit me up and Chris body next. Now I'm filling in no keys at their own request. I'm just filling in for my homie while I'm out of Quebec. Uh, a one time. Tomorrow, you know I'm getting my check. Uh, what you say? I'm just filling in for my homie while I'm out of Quebec. Plus I got my own show tomorrow, you know I'm getting my check, uh, oh yes, right. Rep, rep, north side. Check, what's up? Until I die. Cause my flow's so sick, no vaccination would do I had to stop in Toronto on the way to do an interview With Jazz FM 91, I got my tennis shoes laced up I'm sitting down but I'm so fly Got a show with George Benson in my real bow tie I stay up, just got another call from Trombone Shorty This piano is my story, the glory I'm way up I'm just feeling the end for my homie While I'm out of Quebec, oh Plus I got my own show tomorrow You know I'm getting my check I'm just filling the air for my homies while I'm out in Cuba. And plus I got my own show tomorrow. You know I'm getting my check. Oh, that's right. Jeff, rep, North side. North side. Till I die. It's the Phantom, yep, it's the Phantom. Oh, oh, give me one line. A rep is virtual though, yeah. Opera, opera, everything opera. Started with bottom ramen, but graduated to pasta. Opera, opera, everything opera. Started with bottom ramen, but graduated to pasta. Hooters and noodles, I swear I'm losing my noodle. I'm about to go crazy. Two times for the stun, baby, baby. Young B.I. flow, been kicking this since G.I. Joe. Was on my TV screen in the morning time. That's when I figured out I should do more than rock. Hey family, well listen, 
that concludes our virtual homecoming festival, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for hanging out with us uh, today. We're so grateful for your presence here um, with us. Just want to tell you a couple of things. Tomorrow, uh, we have our virtual homecoming service, which will begin um, at 10 a.m. If you want to check out the announcements and see what's coming up here at TMCBC, you can log on right here on Facebook or on YouTube at 9.45 a.m. But the worship service will begin properly at 10 a.m. So log on, get your family around, and we hope that you will join us for worship. And then tomorrow, we have our homecoming parade at 3 p.m. at the church. And so this is an opportunity for us just to see folks that have been um, partnering with us here in the Richmond region. Uh, online, the disciples of our church, any community members who want to come through uh, and just say hello. So at 3 p.m., we invite you to drive by the Mount Carmel Baptist Church um, at 3200 East Broad Street. Listen, the best way for you to come is to come up broad and then either you'll make a uh, make a right or a left, depending on the direction you're coming from, onto North 32nd Street. And we'll be out there to greet you, to say hello, and may have a little something special for you as well. But listen, thank you so much for joining us and for making our homecoming very special. Take care. God bless. We look forward to seeing you soon. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it.